Stacks not only allow us to create rows or columns of perfectly aligned and distributed elements, they also unlock two of the most powerful sizing modes in Framer, fill and fit content. Since relative position layers are aware of their siblings and push against one another, we can use fill sizing to determine how they scale to occupy the available space, ensuring our designs are fluid and responsive across different screen sizes and devices. On the flip side, stacks can also be set to fit content to automatically snug themselves around their child elements. In this lesson, we're gonna dig deep into how these two sizing modes work, along with how and when to use them. Let's jump in. In the previous lesson, we created a stack of text boxes for a minimalist nav bar. In this case, we were concerned with the alignment and distribution of the elements, but we didn't have to worry about the size because the size was determined by the text itself. But this time, let's say we're creating a stack of rectangles. What size is right for each one? Well, that depends. If we know we want the rectangles to share the available space equally with a gap between each one and some padding around the sides, well, we would have to do some math to figure out the right size for each box, or we could have Framer figure it out for us. This is where fill sizing comes in, which again is unlocked on relative position layers within a stack or grid layout. When we set the width or height of a layer to fill, that layer takes a look at the available space, considering the space occupied by sibling layers, specifically sibling layers that are also set to relative positioning. Absolute layers don't count, but we'll come back to this. We decide how much of the available space we want the layer to fill by using fractional units or FR. The magic of fractional units is the math they do for us when multiple sibling layers are set to fill. All we need to do is decide what portion of the available space should go to each layer. Let's nerd out on how the math works for a second. Let's say we have three relative position siblings in a horizontal stack, each set to one FR. Essentially, each one of these frames is requesting one portion of the space, please. But how big is a portion? Well, in this case, we have one portion plus one portion, plus one portion, for a total of three that are being requested, which makes each portion one out of three, or one third. Sure enough, each frame set to one FR gets a one third share of the available space. So what happens if we increase a frame to two FR? Intuitively, you may have guessed that it would become twice as big as the frame set to one FR, and you'd be right. To unpack that math a bit further, there are now a total of four fractional units being requested. 2FR plus 1FR plus 1FR, or four portions of available space, which means each of these two frames get one of those two fourths being set to 1FR, and this frame gets two fourths being set to 2FR. It's that simple. Just remember that an FR is a fraction of the available space, and rather than dividing by the number of layers, it divides by the total number of FR units of all the sibling layers added up. And the most amazing part is that everything is recalculated in real time if the amount of available space changes, making this an incredibly powerful tool for creating fluid layouts that adapt responsively to different viewport sizes. Another thing to keep in mind is that if one of the sibling layers is set to a fixed size, that'll eat into the available space by a fixed amount. If I set this third frame to a fixed width, there's technically now less available space remaining since this fixed frame ain't gonna budge. The remaining two frames set to one FR share that remaining space equally, with each taking one of the total of two fractional units of available space, or one half. So fill sizing is amazing when we want child layers to expand to fill the available space within their parent frame. Now, let's look at exactly the opposite. Another superpower of stacks is that they can automatically snug themselves down to fit around their child layers using a width or height of fit content. We touched on this in a previous lesson a couple of times, but let's unpack it a bit more. For those situations where you want a frame to wrap itself around the bounds of its child layers, like a card, for example, we can choose fit content, which sets the value to auto since this dimension now will set itself completely automatically. If the frame we're applying this to doesn't have a layout applied, a stack layout will get applied automatically. Why is that? Well, it has to do with what content really means when we say fit content. See, only child layers set to relative positioning are considered part of the flow of content. And remember, relative layers 
are specific to the children of stacks and grids. Then we can use padding to push a little extra space outward from the child layers. And from now on, it'll automatically adjust when child layers are added, removed, or change size. A great little trick to instantly turn a frame into a stack and fit its height and width to its content is to right click and choose fit content or press shift A on the keyboard. And it now works on component instances and text boxes too. I mentioned in the previous lesson, you can use fit content for the height of an entire breakpoint too. So you never have to worry about making more space or getting rid of extra space manually ever again. It's also worth pointing out how fit content works for text boxes themselves too. It really comes in handy. For example, if the width of a text box can flex, we usually want to allow the height to adapt to the text as it reflows. And setting the height to fit content does just that. In general, you may often find yourself setting the height of a stack to fit its content, since we have an unlimited amount of vertical space on the web, while setting the width to fill in order to keep things flexible for varying viewport sizes. In fact, these settings are the defaults when you use the menu item or keyboard shortcut to add a stack around your selection. While we're here, I think it's important to point out that I've just taught you about two sizing modes that can directly conflict with one another. If the parent is set to fit content, there needs to be a child layer with an explicit size to support it, and vice versa. If a child layer is going to fill its parent, the parent needs to have a size of its own to support it. Someone has to be in charge. If you do find yourself trying to do the impossible and tell a child layer to fill its parent while telling the parent to fit its child, Framer tries to help by automatically switching the necessary layers to fix size to avoid the layout collapsing in on itself. You'll get a little warning on the screen when this happens, and you can take a moment to reevaluate your decisions. So now you know how to make the width and height of elements dynamically fill available space or fit the space occupied by their children. These are the building blocks that fluid, responsive layouts are made of. To say that mastering these concepts is key would be an understatement. Take your time and practice building some simple layouts first before you go too crazy. And watch this video a few times if you need to. I'll see you in the next one.